Sunday morning we moved Billy's S10 out of the shop so that we could pull Robbie's G-Body in there and get some work done on it. I think Robbie's got a pretty good handle on the ignition timing and the carburetor is fairly well sorted out. However, the other night when we took it out to make a test hit, Robbie had some problems with the transmission. When he shifted it into high gear, it went straight to the rev limiter. So Robbie's busy working on his G-Body and I'm getting a cold shoulder from Miss Vicky. This junk S10 has been sitting out in the driveway ever since Tommy blew a head gasket on it months ago, and now it's turned into a catch-all for scrap. Well, Tommy made some kind of swap and swindle deal with my brother, and my brother was supposed to come and get this thing months ago. But today is the day that Vicky's patients have run out. Now the thing is, I don't think my brother would get by with leaving this piece of junk sit in his driveway for very long. But I can tell you there has been no rush to get it out of mine. Since Jeremy only lives about a mile and a half from my house, and Billy was available today to help me, I pulled the trigger on moving this thing to Jeremy's house, by any means necessary. Hey, what's Jeremy wanting to do with this thing? All right, I'm just trying to see if I could bash it into this guardrail. About halfway to Jeremy's house, there's a little bit of a hill and a bridge that we have to go across, and the truck would coast faster than the tractor would move. So the truck kind of got away from me there for a few minutes, and Billy had to wait for me to catch up. Now we wait. It probably would have been a good idea for him to just ride the brakes and stay right there with the tractor. So I figured I'd take this opportunity to teach him a lesson. Using mid-range on the John Deere at about 1800 RPM, it's about a 15 to 18 minute drive from my house down to Jeremy's. And during that 18 minutes, Junior got two reminders not to let the truck coast away from the tractor. The last mile or so of the trip was uneventful. Billy kept the truck right in front of the tractor and never coasted far enough away for me to get a run at him. Outside of pushing this thing down the road with the tractor, the next dangerous part of this operation was actually dropping it off in Jeremy's driveway without catching hell from his significant other. Thankfully, nobody was home, but that also means that Billy doesn't have a ride back. How long are you back? Climb in. For all three of your riding? Yeah! I had been texting Jeremy and I thought he was at his house, but since he's not here, Billy had to ride back to my house in the tractor with me and June Pup. Billy had to ride back with a gear shift right between his legs, or it could have been someplace else, I'm not sure. He wasn't too happy about it, but we got it done. Well, Mission accomplished. the red truck is gone. Package delivered. After we got that S10 dropped off up at Jeremy's house, Robbie had just finished pulling that Turbo 400 out of his G-Body. So he loaded it up in his Suburban and he's taking it into Columbus to drop it off to get it fixed. So while the shop is open and there's nobody in there, Billy brought the Mustang in so he could put some final touches on the tune-up. I, on the other hand, have every intention of scoring some more points with my wife. Not only did I get rid of that red S10 out of the driveway, I'm taking her to dinner tonight too. It's Sunday evening, and since we're running a little bit ahead of schedule for when we normally make it to Cracker Barrel, I stopped by the car wash and run the Malibu through it since it hasn't had a bath for over two weeks while it was parked with the engine pulled out of it. I stopped, dried the car off real quick, and then we jumped on 70 to head east towards Pickerington. Vicky was already counting the cars in the parking lot, trying to judge whether or not they'd be out of pot roast by the time she got in there. She hopped out of the Malibu and made a beeline for that front door. She didn't even bother to stop and do any shopping because every time we come in here, it seems like they've just run out of what she wants about the time we sit down. What are you getting? You already know the answer, it's Sunday. Thankfully, they weren't out of her favorite thing, pot roast on Sunday nights. After we got done eating, I went outside, fired up the Malibu and brought it up to the front door and waited on Vicky to do a little window shopping before we head home to go watch a movie. I was quite surprised she came out empty handed and didn't buy any Easter decorations in there while she was inside. Anyway, we drove home, watched a movie and then went to bed early so I could get up the next morning to go run some errands for Billy. He's considering maybe going testing someplace this week and then racing this weekend with the Falcon and the S10 for the very first time since the truck's been rebuilt over the winter. 
But before we can go test and go race this week, I need to head down to Basil Race Fuels in Logan to pick up a couple of drums of methanol. So I fired up the old 64 and let it warm up, and then I hit the road, headed south, down through Baltimore and Lancaster to Logan. I hop off 33 at exit 174 to get to Basel, and it's only about a mile and a half or two miles down on the left-hand side. I went in and paid for a couple drums of methanol, and then this young man brings them out and puts them in the back of the 64 for me very carefully. He's been there every time I needed fuel for the last year and a half, but unfortunately, this is his last week. I can't blame a young man for wanting to move on to bigger and better things. So I wished him luck and pointed the old 64 towards home. I was within about five minutes of the house when Jeremy starts blowing up my phone something about speedometer gears for the 64. Now what? Today's your day. What day? You're bitching and whining and complaining and boo-hooing about your speedo is over. Oh, really? I ordered two of them. Two of them for your 64. It just so happens my truck only needs one. Yeah, well... You drive it, so. You're the one that needs a dozen of them. No. Also, Chumpy has a fuel valve to put into your truck so you can shut from tank to tank off so you don't have your flooding issues. What do I got to do? Climb underneath the truck to operate it? No, you just got to reach down to the floorboard and turn the knob. Just oh, like on the that ought to be are. great. So when's this going to get done? It's going to get done today. And it's going to work? Yeah. We'll see. Now, if you've watched this channel for any amount of time, you've probably already seen the struggles I've had with this stupid speedometer gear problem. Every time I buy a new gear, Jeremy puts it in and it only takes about five minutes for it to get demolished. But this time, Jeremy's dug into a stash of transmission parts out back and claims he's got the solution. It's out of my junk out back that I insist on keeping. What do you think, Rob? What do you think my chances of my speedometer working this time? 26%. For how long? For 26 seconds. There you go, speeder. There you go, speeder. This is it? Test it out. This is the big one. Can't be anything else until we replace the housing. The housing? We replaced everything. Twice. Except you. Yeah, well that's your mistake. I even installed a brand new speedometer just a few months ago in the truck because he thought that the speedometer was bad. At this point, it shows around 134 miles on the odometer. So far, the average life expectancy of a new speedometer gear lies somewhere between five and 25 miles, with at least one not even making it out of the driveway. I carefully accelerate up to about 29 miles an hour and compare the speedometer with my GPS. And according to that, the speedometer is about seven miles per hour off. But so far, it does work. Does it work? It operates. Ha! But it's seven miles an hour off. That's your fault. No, it's not. You ordered the gear. You ordered it? I've been waiting no, three months for it. I ordered the one it. that you ordered the last time, which came from Jegs and said it was the last one known to man. And then I screwed that one up. Oh, what was that? It's come again? Say that one the, more time. The problem is this housing has a flaw in it. But oh. if you look here, it registered red gear, green gear, 45, 37. This was the right part, but there's a problem with it. That's what's been tearing the gears up. I think I know what the problem is. Here at the old man's garage, parking is a problem. See, the parking is... We're gonna park directly in your way every time. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna clog the driveway and we're gonna make everything as difficult as possible to maneuver. Yeah, you and me are the only two. The only two. Otherwise it's in the middle of the driveway, in the middle of that driveway, or in the middle of this driveway. Good grief. Anyway, after we got that speedometer fixed in the 64, it was time to start getting the trailers ready to take off for the weekend to go racing. Kenny's been busy resealing the roof on top of the race car trailer, but unfortunately he's run out of material and he's requesting a new caulking gun. So, me and June Pup, since we haven't had lunch, decide to hop into Malibu and head down towards Hebron to get lunch, and we'll stop down and see Mark at A1 and pick up a new caulking gun and a couple other little things that we need for the shop. 
June Pups got pretty accustomed to going to Burger King with me and going through the drive-thru. She knows when we pull in there, she's about to get chicken fries, her favorite thing on the menu. She's very patient and very polite. She always waits for me to get her food out of the bag for her. But since we don't have cup holders in the Malibu and I'm trying to hang on to my Coke, we decide to go down and see Mark and sit down and have lunch with him in his office. Since Scrappy refuses to ride in the Malibu, me and June Pup split that box of chicken fries all to ourselves. She almost seemed offended when she was offered a dog bone instead of something out of the bag. Where's your brother? Last I saw, he was pulled over by the police. Seriously? While June Pup and I were sitting in the Burger King drive through I got a message from Kenny telling me that Jeremy was going to take a little bit longer to get back to the shop than he expected. Head hunters. There you go, Speeder. There you go, Speeder. I find it ironic that he got a speeding ticket after he claims I've been crying about my speedometer that he's been trying to fix for six months. Anyway, I finished up my lunch and Mark starts pulling out all the stuff that Jeremy ordered. Do you want the professional caulking gun or do you want the semi-professional caulking gun? I'll take the semi-professional. Okay, because it probably won't last long, will it? No. Okay. So Mark helps me load up a couple cases of motor oil and my new semi-professional caulking gun and I head back to the shop. By that time, Billy had made it there, and he's reporting to Jeremy a problem with his Dodge Dually, which we plan on using this weekend. Jeremy finds that the transmission cooler lines are leaking and orders the parts. Fuel gauge don't work. Since Jeremy has miraculously fixed the speedometer, I decided to try my luck today and see if he can get the gas gauge fixed as well. He removed the sending unit out of the tank and claims that he has made adjustments to the float that should fix the problem. So me and the turd barrels take the truck down to the marathon to top it off with gas and see if the gas gauge actually reads anything higher than half a tank. I filled the cab tank as full of gasoline as I could possibly get it, and no matter what, the gas gauge still only reads half a tank of fuel. Later that afternoon, we pulled a Mustang in to work on the charging system. Should be okay. Uncle Terry said so. We'll find out. This thing worked but uh, the post in the back of it's loose. Like, I don't know, it doesn't charge very good. It, usually 12.7 to 13.1 is all I've ever seen out of that thing. This well, is a, it is. Pointing the ground up to this, plus the red over here. Yeah, it's typical, just a ground. So technically two wire, like <laughs> a ground wire. But yeah, it should be okay. I don't know what the situation was on this one, but that's what came on the car. We'll see. This is Uncle Terry approved. There we go. You gonna go? Yep. I thought the other alternator bolted from the back side. No, just the bolt did. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh oh, that don't look good. There's no threads in either. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Those are my threads. Yeah. I guess a long bolt from the nut. There we go. Just ran a bolt straight through both of them. Oh, this one down here went all the way through, but this one. Yeah. Well, let's see if we can get the belt on it. We have to watch Street Outlaws tonight. It's tonight, tonight. Uncle Jimmy Dale's on there yelling and screaming at people. <laughs> all right, so we got the belt on, but. That belt is about one rib narrower than what it should be. We'll have to maybe take that belt back off and take it to Mark and see if he can get me one a little bit wider. Looks like you use a new pulley too. Yeah, idler pulley. All right. Pretty worn out. Is the charge cable hooked up? Yeah, it's hooked up. Okay. Let's fire it up and see what it does.
have to get a wider belt. I'll get with Mark tomorrow and we'll get a wider belt for it. It's definitely charging a lot harder than the other one did, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know how the other one was charging at all. I don't know either. It wasn't charging very well, I can tell you that. Yeah, the whole post is loose. Well, we'll get a wider belt and we'll see what happens tomorrow, I guess. So you guys remember Sunday afternoon when I took that red S10 to Jeremy's house? Well, it didn't sit in his driveway very long before it was ordered into the garage to be stripped and parted out. He's not going to keep it in his driveway like he did mine. Let's get over to Williams, we got shit to do. So Buckwheat loads up all of his tools in his little fire truck and heads towards my house. I've already been on him this morning that I've got a change in plans and it's gonna require some maintenance done on another piece of equipment in order for us to go test and race this weekend. Originally, I thought we were only taking the S10 and the Malibu, but those plans have changed. So the fuel tank valve on the 64 has become a non-issue for the moment. What are you looking at me like that for? You guys and your genius plans. Well, I've got a new plan today. So we gotta get the big trailer pulled out and get the brakes checked on it because I thought it was just gonna be the S10 and the Malibu going? No. Billy wants to take the Falcon too. So, we're gonna have to hook that big tandem trailer to my dually. And Billy says the brakes on his trailer aren't very good. That's where you come in. Now, although my old dually is a little rough looking, it actually runs and drives perfectly fine. However, if we're gonna pull this trailer with two cars behind my dually, the trailer brakes have to be 100%. So Jeremy brings his tools and his little fire truck out back to begin a 100 point safety inspection. What's with that? That's a warning light. Warning for what? There might be numb nuts in the area. You know what I think? You're the numb nut. No. Now initially when I told Billy my plan to pull this trailer with my dually, he told me that the brakes probably need to be checked out. And if you know my son, if he says the brakes are bad, they're probably completely falling apart. Mark's got all your brakes up there. He's pulling everything off the shelf, uh, backing plates and seals. I think the drums are 50-50, I'll let you. He's figuring out a price on drums too, but I'll let you make that decision. We're not doing that. We just put all new on. All right, so get the new drums. So now what are you doing? I'm going to buyers to get the transmission line for the Dodge. Yeah, at $400 for two lines, three feet. So Jeremy and I decide to split up. He's going to Columbus to pick up parts for the Dodge, and I'm headed to Buckeye Lake to go see Mark and pick up all new brake parts for Billy's tandem car trailer. Now at this point, Jeremy knows that the transmission cooler lines on the Dodge are leaking, but without disassembling the truck, he really can't see what's causing the problem to begin with. If he had gone ahead and disassembled the truck, he would have seen that there was a problem with the engine mount and been able to pick it up maybe at the Dodge dealer while he was there. In a perfect world, that's what would have happened. Unfortunately, we don't live in a perfect world. But at least Jeremy remembered to stop by the farm and go through his natural habitat to find the tools that he was gonna to need to disassemble the cooler lines. Oh, look, right where I left them. Something that won't happen over there. When Jeremy got back to the shop, he jumped back on the trailer and started putting the brakes all back together on. I, on the other hand, have a little errand to run in the Malibu. Currently, Vicky Suburban is at Lucor Automotive in Columbus getting some front end repairs done and an alignment. And I need to drive into Columbus to pick up Tess and Tony at the airport. They flew into John Glenn International this afternoon. They're gonna stay the night with us and then they're driving from our house back to Kentucky to 10 soldiers to pick up a race car and haul it to Texas tomorrow. While I was outside waiting on Tony and Tess to come out, the security guard kept badgering me to move this car forward. And when I fired it up, he had to see underneath the hood. Once I was determined to not be a security threat, I was free to go. And the three of us cruised back to the house in air-conditioned comfort. They unloaded their bags out of the Malibu and I caught Tess trying to steal a bottle of my A1. At this point, everybody's here. Tommy and Allison have the dart, Billy's working on his S10, and Robbie's putting the Turbo 400 back in his G-Body. He got the transmission back from the transmission shop and he's itching to make test hits. Meanwhile, out back, Uncle Buckwheat is putting the finishing touches on putting new brakes and all new hubs on the trailer. 
Once we had the trailer setting back on all four wheels and tires, it was time to make some adjustments to the hitch to get it set up for the different ride height between Billy's Dodge and my old Chevy. Once that was done, I plugged the trailer plug in, checked the brake controller, and checked all the lights, and then pulled the truck and trailer around beside the shop to make a couple minor adjustments to the hitch. Thankfully, I think my Malibu is just about ready to go. Robbie was finishing up the Turbo 400's installation in his G-body, and Billy was double-checking the throttle and the shifter cable adjustment in the car. At this point, all of us were feeling pretty good about our chances to go testing and go racing this weekend. Although Robbie's car isn't going with us this weekend, it'll be ready when we get back from the trip. At this point, we're all feeling pretty confident that we're just about ready to leave. Little did we know, we're about 20 minutes from finding out that Billy's Dodge Dually has got yet another major, major problem. One that we're not gonna be able to fix very easily and possibly not even in time to go racing. This particular situation is definitely gonna put Uncle Bucko and Mark down at A1 to the test. Bucko. What? What have you broken now? I haven't broken nothing. Well, something's broken. You're on the phone to Chump. After hours, by the way. He closes at six. Well, not on my watch, he doesn't. What's wrong with this thing now? It's got a broken motor mount, the turbo's laying on the frame, and the oil pan's rubbing on the cross member. That's perfect. Yeah. Well, do we have parts coming or what? First thing in the morning. You know what it's gonna do tomorrow, right? Yeah. Rain. I want the John Deere part here. I'm putting a tarp over this. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, we're not touching this thing and moving it. It's staying right where it's at until it's Oh together. my God, it's tore apart out here in the middle of the driveway. It looks like West you Virginia guys, Hill. You still got Speedy Couch on the left. This thing won't even fit in there. Speedy Couch? What's wrong with the Speedy Couch? Oh, I just need to adjust the shifter first gear wasn't right. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What's Kenny Powers doing up there? He's working the shifter for me. Oh. <laughs> hey, Kenny, did you see what's sitting out back? I sure did. Your long-lost <laughs> buddy. <laughs> now, you remember earlier in the video when I told you that Vicky's Suburban is at Lucor getting the front suspension fixed and an alignment done? Well, Austin from Lucor was nice enough to come out and pick the Suburban up, but he left one of his vehicles here with us the AMX, which Kenny Powers is very fond of. Kenny messaged Austin at Lucor and asked him if it was okay for Kenny to take it for a test drive, to which Austin replied, sure, Kenny, go ahead. Even though the last time Kenny took this car for a test drive, he was anything but easy on it. Kenny definitely had a good time taking this car out the last time and running the crap out of it. And Austin knows exactly the way Kenny plans on driving it. So it was no surprise that during the test drive, Kenny got a terrible, terrible idea. This is where Vicky almost has a conniption fit, and I blame Uncle Jimmy Dale and the coonskin cap. Kenny's chemical imbalance between the Mountain Dew and the Marlboro cigarettes is bad enough, but when you add the coon hat on top, well, Kenny couldn't help himself. Now, believe it or not, Kenny actually does have a conscience, and he was concerned that he might damage Austin's AMC. So, Kenny pulled over and parked it, and let Uncle Bucko take over. And when it comes to absolutely running the shit out of something, Jeremy has no conscience whatsoever. Unfortunately, you can only put about four gallons of gas in the AMX before it runs out on the ground. So our time was somewhat limited. I didn't break it. Yeah. That was just too much, too excessive. Ew. 
After a long, hard day of working on Billy's trailer, Jeremy felt really good to take his frustrations out on someone else's vehicle. Unfortunately, he was going to have his hands full the next day, dealing with Chumpy and the engine mount on Billy's Dodge. He did manage to get an early start, though. He was at Mark's as soon as they opened. Well, it's about time. Well, we got to talk. Just because you drive a little red truck doesn't mean that you're a fireman. We got emergencies here, Phil. You we got to chop, chop. Whatever, but you got to obey posted speed limits. And you Says also who? can't... You also can't call out a five alarm at 610 and expect me to come running with my little I've water. I've never hose. seen that rule. Well, it's there. Well, I'm my stating it now. My employer says different. Well, I'm just saying. Anyway, we did get your motor mount. That's, I don't understand that thing. That's a, looks like a nightmare to me. You should see it from my end. Yeah, I'm sure. So after picking up the parts down at Mark's, Jeremy backs his little fire truck up to the Dodge and puts his own shit suit on and prepares to do battle with what is known as the all infamous Cummins engine mount. This engine mount failure allowed the engine to lean towards the passenger side and put the turbo right on the frame rail, as well as the transmission cooler lines. Anyway, Jeremy and Kenny got the truck put back together while Scrappy provided security from squirrels who might want to steal Jeremy's tools. Thankfully, we didn't have any security breaches and no one got injured working on this truck out in the driveway with a cherry picker. We were also fortunate that the rain held off today because where that truck's parked, Jeremy would have been swimming in a mud puddle. There's about a hundred different ways you could look at this deal and all of them could have been way worse than what we had to deal with. We're just very fortunate to have the team of people helping us that can get the work done and get the parts for us when we need them. All right, guys, welcome back to the shop. It has been a week, I'm telling you. It has been something else. But we are just about ready to load up. Actually, we are ready to load up first thing in the morning. Uh, we brought the Malibu in, put it up on the lift, the Falcons here underneath. These two are gonna go on the open trailer behind my dually, and the S10's already loaded up in the 50-foot enclosed. And we're gonna head out tomorrow morning. Now, we're going to a private test session midway between here and Leakesville, Mississippi. Uh, I think Billy may have had a video come up tonight and he explains where we're going. Uh, we're headed to Leakesville, Mississippi to a race called the Inverse. I believe Limpy is flagging, I think. Anyway, we're just about ready to head out. All we gotta do is load up these two cars, tie them down in the morning. Uh-oh, oh, good grief. Vic, I'm trying to get this video done. Oh, what? I'm trying to get this video done. I got to get to bed. Me I got to get up for, huh? I have to get to bed too. Well then, what are you doing? Let's wrap it up. I am. Do you want some detail? Are you, no. Are, are you telling people? I already going? told them where we're going. We're going to Leakesville, Mississippi. Yeah, the, the track is called Dra uh, Street Racing Haven in Leakesville, Mississippi. Is that it? Mm -hmm. That's all? Can I finish? Yes. All right. <laughs> All right. So we're going, as she said, as I said, we're going to Leakesville, Mississippi to Street Racing Haven. Okay. We will be there this weekend, barring any major complications during testing tomorrow. So I need to get this video done. I need to get it uploaded. I got to get a thumbnail edited and get to bed because I have to get up very early in the morning to load these cars, tie them down and get on the road. So. If you guys are headed to Leakesville, Mississippi this weekend, we'll probably see you down there. Good night, everybody. Good no night yet. What? Wait, did you tell everybody? Tell them what? 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 The giveaway. I don't know what the giveaway is. People you never been asking, what's the giveaway price for this month? Oh, I thought we were done. No. Well, I just realized that I haven't had the chance to tell everybody. Okay. You told them. Yeah. That's anybody what, uh, who has placed an order... From the beginning of March, clear to the end of March, you have a chance to win one of these cool signs. Are we done? Yeah, check out the merch.
We're about to have the loudest Uber ever. Did you call the Uber? Yeah, the loudest one. Yeah. You can hear it already. I can smell it. It smells like E85 in here. 